I'm John Refrano for Boris TV and welcome to the Boris Continuum Complete for Vegas Pro Training Series. In this episode, we're taking Boris TV on the road. We got the 18-wheeler pack. We're heading down the Mass Pike to bring you a brand new plug-in in BCC7 called Corner Pinning. Okay, so we're not heading down the Mass Pike and there is no 18-wheeler for Boris TV. But the point is, with Corner Pinning, you can make it look like there really is things that aren't there. Let me show you how this is done. I'll start with a new project. Uh, and we'll just head on over to the Explorer and take my moving truck and drop it down on the timeline. Now this is 4.3 uh, Media. This is some old DV footage. And I wanted to use DV footage uh, for a reason. I, you know, I, if you use pristine footage and everything works, um, you know, then people try to do this at home and, and nothing works. So I thought I would use footage that was of questionable quality. And um, hopefully the tracker will lose its way a little bit. And I'll show you how to recover from that. Okay, we've got the footage on the timeline, and the corner pinner is one of the compositing modes. It's what they call a two-to-one transform. So in order to add corner pinning, we're going to click on the compositing mode button and go up here to custom. And then you'll find the BCC corner pin along with several other BCC two-to-one transforms. We'll just click OK to add it. So corner pinning is now a compositing mode. And the first thing you'll see here is there's a little inset of the track that you're looking at. And we're going to change that in a second. Um, here are the corners. And if you notice, if I change these corners, you can see the, this inset changing, right? So if I wanted to pin this to the side of the truck, I could uh, move that corner there and then go move this corner here. But that gets kind of tricky. So what I like to do uh, as an easier way to do this is go right down to the motion tracker. I go to the motion tracker, say track on the fly, and it gives me all the areas that it's going to track, the four trackers, and that makes it a little bit easier to place them. So now we'll go back up to the uh, corner trackers, and I'm going to hold the control key so that I get really uh, fine movements when I move these, because I want to put these in the four corners of the side of this tractor trailer. So that's corner one, and we'll move corner two up into that corner. I'll open up corner three, and we'll move that one in. I just want to get them right right in the corners there. Uh, open up corner four and move that one up to the last corner. And so what's going to happen here with corner pinning, it's going to use these four pins <clears throat> right, to uh, track four corners of an object and then we can superimpose our own video or a still image or whatever we want that's going to be on the lower track uh, into the corner pin. So now that that's set up, we want to use RAM preview to do the tracking. So let's go into Options, Preferences, and then on the Video tab, make sure that you have enough dynamic RAM allocated for RAM Preview. You'll notice I've got uh, seven gigabytes available on my machine, and I've dedicated a gigabyte for dynamic RAM Preview. That's gonna be enough for what I wanna use. If you don't have enough memory, uh, you're gonna have to do this several times because you might run out of dynamic RAM. But this is an important parameter to have up when you're doing this tracking. And now in order to do the tracking, what we're going to do is invoke Dynamic RAM Preview. You can do this by doing Shift-B, or you can come up to the Tools and then Build Dynamic RAM Preview. You can see that Shift-B. So we'll start building the preview, and now you can see that the corner pinners are tracking. This little one in the corner is having a really hard time. It's real bumpy, and so I'm going to stop it uh, because I know that is not going to look well when we start to track. So let me reset the tracker, clear the tracking cache, and I just want to position uh, that third corner again. And this is one of the reasons I didn't want to use nice pristine uh, you know, HD footage because uh, I wanted some of these things to go wrong so you can see what to do in that case. So I've reset everything. I've reset the tracker. I'm really going to start tracking all over again and I'm going to double click to highlight the region and hit con uh, Shift B and that's going to start tracking again. Okay, now it's, it's lost the track. So you see when it loses the track, it says move timeline cursor to a previous track frame and click the clear render cache button to resume the tracking. Uh, so you just have to click back until you find the last good frame. So I'm forward, back, that was the last good frame. I hit clear render cache. I'm gonna zoom in here and uh, let me just move this and then hit shift B again so that it'll start from that point and track again. That seems to be tracking good. All right, I'm going to speed this uh, tracking up for you, and uh, we'll, we'll come back when it's done. 
All right, so I've stopped it. Uh, we've got enough of this uh, tracked. Actually pull this in a little bit. The next thing I want to do is uncheck track on the fly and you'll notice immediately it has uh, taken the track and superimposed it on that area. So now's the time we want to pick what else we want to have in this video and I want to have the Boris TV logo. Uh, so I'm just going to double click on the tracks to make them smaller so we can see them here. We don't have a lot of real estate. I'll go over to uh, the Explorer. We'll take the Boris TV logo, drop it in a lower track and then extend it out for the duration. Now, normally when you want to superimpose something, you'd put it on a track above, but remember, this is a composite. So don't think of it so much as superimposing. Think of it like punching a hole, right? So you're like punching a hole through the top track uh, that'll let the bottom track show through. And so in order to make this bottom track show through, I've got to go back to the top and I go to this corner pin source and instead of none, I say source B, which is the second track. And there's the Boris TV logo uh, right in there and now I'm going to play it and you'll see it comes along with the Boris TV logo corner pin to the side of the truck. Now that's jittering a little bit. I would probably go back and track that again to get rid of that jitter. But I just wanted to show you, uh, you know, so you would go back um, and do the tracking all over again to get it to not jitter. And I, and I did see those those corner pins jittering a little bit uh, and so I would have stopped it at that point. But that gives you the idea how to do that. Let's do another one because uh, I want to show two of them here. So let me uh, stop this, uh, create a new project. I'm going to go to my Explorer and I've got this road sign that I want to do some tracking on. And once again, these are not uh, HD, these are just DV footage. And so I'm going to go into my pan crop and match my output aspect. And then again, I want to go to the composite mode, select custom, select corner pin and this time we're going to work a little bit differently uh, once again I'll go down right down to the motion tracker and click track on the fly but instead of getting the corners uh, trying to get the corners of these signs if you'll notice this sign has these little rivets in it and they're going to make it a lot easier to track so I'm actually going to track the rivets uh, so I'm going to put one in the middle of this one this is kind of hard to see because I've got my uh, window set to 1280 by 720 because I want the quality to be good when we put it up on the web. Uh, you would probably be working with a much larger workspace, in which case this window would be larger and making these pins, uh, aligning the pins would be larger and, and much easier. And let me do the fourth one. That's it right about there. Okay, so now I've got uh, these four little dots set as the area that I want it to track. And let me show you something else that you can do. Uh, this is um, motion tracker pre-processing. We're going to turn that on for a second and we're just going to bring down the blacks and the whites and make this thing much, much more contrasty, uh, if contrasty is even a word. Uh, we give it more contrast so that it can really see these uh, rivets pop out. This is what the motion tracker will see. We can now turn it off uh, and the motion tracker will see that nice high contrast image when it does its tracking. Now there's one more thing I want to do before I start this track because those dots are so small. I'm going to take my preview and set it to half uh, and that should give a little bit higher resolution uh, to get those dots a little more accurate. So now let me go down and hit shift B and we'll start tracking. Now the sign's not moving at first and then it pulls back but it is wavering a little bit in the wind and we're gonna we're gonna see how that works when we map our second image onto it. Once again I'm gonna speed this up so you don't have to sit through all the tracking but it did track much better because we use the tracker pre-process and got better contrast. And that's probably far enough away for our purposes. So there you can see the track. It's pretty good, pretty on. Okay, now we can stop and go back and turn off the track on the fly. And you'll see it's superimposed the current track within those corners, right? Uh, but I've got something else I want to put in there. So um, I'm going to go up to the uh, Explorer and I made my own little danger 
sign to put uh, down here. And remember, we drop this on a lower track because we're actually uh, punching a hole. Uh, and then I'll go back to the composite mode. And for the corner pin source, I'll say the source is B, and there comes my sign. So danger, corner pinning can be very addictive. Use it at your own risk. Um, now, what I want to do, the reason I did this was I want to show you some of the other things in the corner pinner here that come in handy. Uh, first, this sign is smaller, a lot smaller than uh, the actual video uh, space that it's put in, so I want to do some cropping to make it bigger rather than use scale. So I'm going to crop the left, and notice it gets cut off where the corner pin was, right? So I'm going to crop it just so that it comes into frame before that, and then I'll crop the top so that gets the whole thing in. I'll crop the right and bring that back and then I'll crop the bottom. So now I've cropped it kind of fill that whole area. Then we'll go over to our scaling and offset. So now I want it to cover the whole sign but it's tracking on those pins. So I'm going to use scale to scale this sign up bigger. And there, now I've got it almost covering the whole thing. I can use the master offset here uh, to just offset it a little bit or even uh, scale it up a little more. Um, now, I don't want to cover the whole thing because I'm going to show you what I want to do here. The sign is a little bit on an angle and then I can tweak these master offsets right, um, and, and get it just right in the center and then each corner has its own offset. So I can kind of get that right in the corner that it belongs in. And notice the sign is just kind of distort. The perspective is distorting just enough to map these right into where the original sign was. I'm going to move this down a little and move this one over. And so now I've got that really, really uh, showing about the same. Let's play it back and see how it looks. Uh, there it is, tracking really, really nicely. Right, so that's all there is to it. Find something to get to, to corner pin track and then map the sign on uh, or whatever you're going to map on to, uh, to your object. Okay, one more thing I want to do here, um, just to make this look like it fits in the project a little bit better, I'm going to go down to uh, my corner pin sign and add a, um, an effect to it. And I just want to add the Sony levels because this, the white is just a little bit too bright. I want to bring that white down a little. See how that just sits in the picture a little bit better by bringing that white down? Uh, and that makes it a little more believable. Now, one last thing I want to show you, and this is, for me, this is what really puts uh, these Boris FX plugins over the top. There's one last thing I want to show you here, uh, and that is the light wrap. I'm going to open up light wrap. What light wrap does, and let me, let me move this uh, closer so we can, can see that. What light wrap is going to do, and, and we really don't need it in this one, but I, but I want you to see how it works. It's going to wrap the light from the background around the picture that I inserted. I'm going to exaggerate it so that you can really see what's going on. I'm going to bring up the uh, softness and then bring up the width. And look at what's happening. You see, this is all the way down and then all the way in. It's just wrapping the light from the surrounding background around the object and just a touch of light wrap is usually all you need to just give that extra take those you know those edges uh, of putting something uh, into a composite and you get those rough edges and the light wrap just wraps the light around them nice and softly uh, it's not it doesn't look fake because it's using the background image to wrap the light and it really helps sell the shot so there you are Sign blowing in the wind a little and then pulling back. So that wraps it up. Hope you learned a lot about corner pinning. If you need more information, drop by BorisFX.com. This is John Rafrano for Boris TV. Until next time, thanks for watching.